Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my grocery haul for weight loss. I posted a video a few weeks ago now about how to put together meals to reverse insulin resistance. And today I'm going to be showing you some of my favorite staple foods that fit within that framework. And if you're new to my channel and you just clicked on this video, you might be saying, okay, I'm just looking to lose weight. I'm not insulin resistant. Maybe you don't even know what that is. And the thing is, is that most people nowadays, despite not knowing it, actually are insulin resistant. And insulin resistance is likely what is making it difficult for you to lose weight. And aside from difficulty losing weight, if you eat a meal and you're still hungry, if you have sugar cravings, if you have skin tags or dark patches of skin, if you have high blood pressure, if you're a woman and you have irregular periods or PCOS, or if you're a man and you have low testosterone, these are all signs that you have insulin resistance. And the reason that insulin resistance so often goes undiagnosed is because most doctors do not routinely test fasting insulin. They will test fasting blood sugar, but the thing is, is that insulin resistance starts years before your fasting blood sugar starts to rise. So it's already started long before your blood sugar goes up. But anyways, the point is, is that insulin resistance is so common and it's more than likely the reason that you're having difficulty losing weight. And I wanted to do this grocery haul today because simply focusing on low calorie foods. Oh, let me get my cat. <laughs> yes, you wanna come inside? Come on. Come on. Let's try that again. The reason I wanted to do this grocery haul today is that simply focusing on eating low calorie foods is not only going to make you feel miserable, but it's also not gonna help you to achieve maintainable results. Like I said at the start of this video, the foods I'm gonna be showing you today fit within the framework that I talked about in my previous video. So I highly recommend pausing this video, checking this one out first, and then coming back. <laughs> but the quick summary of the framework is that you want to be prioritizing protein at every meal, you want to be getting at least 30 grams in at each meal, then you want to add healthy fat for cooking. From there, you want to add non-starchy vegetables and low sugar fruit and then add additional healthy fat for satiety. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you some of my favorite foods that fit within that framework that can help you to lose weight without counting calories. And make sure to stick around until the end of this video because I'm gonna be hooking you up with a printable version of the shopping list. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share and make sure to subscribe and make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and now TikTok where I share new videos every single day. Not new videos, just new posts. Videos on TikTok, reels on Instagram, not everywhere. New posts, new videos, lots going on, follow me on whatever social platforms you have. <laughs> okay, so as I was saying, the first step is to prioritize protein. This is absolutely key. Protein is the most important out of the three macronutrients. The three macronutrients being protein, fat, and carbs. It's the building blocks for the cells in our body, our muscle tissues, our hair, our nails, our bones, you name it. And this is one of my biggest issues with the typical keto diet is that there's this fear of protein. There's this fear that too much protein is gonna kick you out of ketosis and it's not that simple. And this fear of protein leads to people under consuming it. And this is why some people, when they first start a keto diet, experience hair loss because they're not eating enough protein. But besides that, protein plays such a big role in satiety. If you are eating enough protein at your meals, you're not gonna be hungry to snack in between. And especially for your first meal of the day, you want to make sure you're getting enough protein. So of course, my first protein staple is eggs. They are super versatile, a good source of protein, and also healthy fat. 
One egg has about seven grams of protein. So if you have maybe two to four eggs and then add in some bacon or add in some smoked salmon, then you're gonna easily hit that 30 grams of protein. Or cheese, if you tolerate it, that's another good option to get a little bit more protein and fat in as well. Now in terms of other protein rich foods that are good for weight loss and insulin resistance, meat and seafood, absolutely the best hands down. I feel like I talk about this all the time, so if you're not new to my channel, I'm sorry for sounding like a broken record, but plant protein does not compare to animal protein in any way, shape or form, especially when it comes to insulin resistance and weight loss. First off, it's just not as bioavailable or easy to digest as animal protein. So it's really not comparable gram for gram. And then the issue with focusing on foods such as beans and legumes for your protein source is they also come with a lot of carbohydrates. And we want to keep carbohydrates to a minimum when we're working to reverse insulin resistance. So it's extremely difficult to get enough protein and to keep your carbohydrates low if you're focusing on plant protein sources. All of that is to say, I have been buying my meat almost exclusively from Butcher Crowd for the last year. I get a box delivered to my door every single month. Well, actually that's not true. I paused my subscription last month because I was out of the country, which is one of the great things that I love about Butcher Crowd is you can pause your subscription at any time. <laughs> Butcher Crowd is a meat delivery service here in Australia that's focused on quality, ethics, and sustainability. They have 100% grass-fed beef, pasture-raised chicken and pork, their salmon is 100% wild-caught, and all of their other seafood is Australian and also 100% wild-caught. And this gold band snapper I want to really highlight because I had this for the first time ever last month and it is so, so good. If you are not a fan of flaky fish, this is like a white fish and doesn't have that fishy taste at all. It's so good. I was blown away. I didn't expect to like this that much. Their sausages, which I didn't get this month, are really great as well. They have no filler. Again, a really great source of protein. <laughs> they have several boxes to choose from and the option to build your own. I have been getting the beef and chicken box and adding some seafood or sausages or whatever I feel like. Like I said, you can pause your subscription at any time. And if you do wanna check them out, you can use code KATE10 to save 10% off your order. I'll put the link in the description box down below. Anyways, focusing your meals around any of these foods is going to be the way to go for weight loss and insulin resistance. But other good options for upping your protein intake are Greek yogurt and bone broth. This bone broth, it's called a bone broth body glue. And all you do is you take like a teaspoon and you add that to boiling water. You can use it in your cooking or you can just drink a glass of it. I just love the simplicity of this rather than buying it in liquid. I do make my own occasionally, but I mean, it's easy, it's straightforward, but this is just really great to have on hand. <laughs> and Greek yogurt. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with Greek yogurt. I used to eat so much yogurt back years ago when I was overweight and trying to eat healthy and trying to do all the right things. I thought yogurt was just about the healthiest breakfast you could have. Of course, I was eating the ones that were flavored and had added sugar, and then I was drowning them in granola. <laughs> but actually, since I had my jaw surgery, I was on a liquid diet for about five weeks, and I guess a soft food diet, and I started eating yogurt again, and I realized that it is a really good source of protein, and I often get asked for high-protein snacks and whatnot, and while I do think that snacking is not ideal, if you're eating enough in your meals, you shouldn't have the urge to snack. Greek yogurt is a good option if you are looking for a snack. Put a few berries on top and you're good to go. Okay, now let's get into cooking oils. So my favorite oils for cooking are coconut oil, ghee, and olive oil if I'm cooking something at a lower temperature or just adding this to food after I've cooked it. For any high heat cooking, you want to use saturated fats that are solid at room temperature. These are the most heat stable. Vegetable oils, avoid at all costs. They can contribute to insulin resistance and make it more difficult for you to lose weight. 
Like I said, olive oil is good, but you just don't want to heat it too much. So yeah, use it for low temperatures or add it to salads and things like that. Now in terms of non-starchy vegetables and low sugar fruit, onions, this is not onions, garlic and onions are really great options that you can pretty much add to anything. Avocados, of course, good source of monounsaturated fat and just all around a great food. They have a lot of potassium in them as well. Mushrooms, love mushrooms, great low carb option. Broccoli, cauliflower, also really great choices. So that's the first three steps to my framework. Prioritize protein, choose a cooking oil slash fat, and then add low sugar fruit and non-starchy vegetables. Then you can add additional fat. So avocados, I just mentioned, that would be a way to add some more fat to your meal. Butter, if you're having like a steak or putting this on top of vegetables. Coconut milk or coconut cream is really good to use in cooking. I love making butter chicken in my slow cooker and I add coconut milk in to add some extra fat and flavor. A good quality mayo that has either olive oil or avocado oil in it and no vegetable oil is another good way to add some extra fat. This one's from Hunter and Gather, which is actually a UK brand and they sent me some of their things to try so that I would have something to recommend to my followers who are in the UK. So if you're in the UK, this one's great. If you're in Australia or North America, I'll link some other brands down below that are really good as well. Olives, so underrated. These are another great way to add some fat in to your diet. Cheese too, as long as you're not lactose intolerant. Cheese, fantastic addition. Oh, this isn't necessarily, well, it's not at all, <laughs> a way to add fat in, but I forgot to mention sauerkraut. Sauerkraut is a probiotic. It's a fermented food, really great for your gut. And then when you're choosing sauces, this is another one from Hunter and Gather. You really wanna make sure that you're getting ones that don't have added sugar, that have pretty much as low sugar as possible. So again, I'll link some brands down below. If you are in the UK, Hunter and Gather is great. If you're in North America, Primal Kitchen. If you're in Australia, Undivided Food Co. All fantastic. And then the one last thing I'm gonna mention is apple cider vinegar. And this is a little bit of a hack. If you've watched some of my other videos, you've probably heard me talk about apple cider vinegar before. But having apple cider vinegar before your meals significantly lowers the blood sugar and insulin response to that meal. So especially if you're having a few more carbohydrates, just taking a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and diluting it in water, drinking that, it's going to change the way that that meal impacts you for the better. If you wanna know more about how apple cider vinegar is beneficial for weight loss, I'm going to link a video up above so you can learn more about that. But I think that is pretty much everything. So these are some great foods you can eat if you're trying to lose weight, if you have insulin resistance, if you're just trying to maintain your weight and your overall health. All of these foods are fantastic. Again, if you haven't watched the other video on how to put together a meal for insulin resistance, I'll link that above and you can check that out. And if you're in Australia, make sure to check out Butcher Crowd. They have all your meat and seafood needs covered. Super high quality, super great company. Their customer service as well is fantastic. If you have any issues, they are, they'll just go above and beyond. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section down below what your shopping list looks like. And as promised, if you guys want to get a printable copy of this shopping list, there's gonna be a link at the top of the description box down below. Click that link and I'll send the list to you right away. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time. If you did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy that video that I mentioned earlier on how to put together a meal for insulin resistance. I'll link it here. If you wanna catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it right here. And if you wanna check out my keto diet and carnivore diet coaching programs, you can find them here. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.